Hello everyone, subscribers and followers. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. I run the Chemistry YouTube channel. You can call, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Today I'm going to do a book review on the Africans who wrote the Bible. I don't know why I have never given a book review on this book. Um, I have an idea why, you know, I never gave a review on it, but I'm here now. It's a really a juicy book. It's really got a lot of historical information on it about the origins of the Bible, where it comes from. Uh, Nana Banshee Darkwa, uh, linguistically traced, uh, the Jewish people. Uh, back to Akan tribe in Africa. These are the most ancient, oldest people uh, related to uh, to the ancient Egyptians. They were the first people there uh, before uh, it was known as ancient Egypt. Uh, this book is phenomenal. Uh, I use this book to write my book, Matriarch to Patriarch. I use that, uh, the Sybil book. Uh, and destruction of black civilization because I really wanted I, I saw that uh, these Afrocentric authors were really avoiding um, the ancient spiritual practices of women and when I read the book Sybil it really helped me put everything in perspective and tie everything in together so matriarch and patriarch I had to read all those book books to really find out the history of our ancestral mothers but this was a phenomenal... It, all the books were, were great books uh, because I gained knowledge out of each one of them. So all of those books uh, should be in your library. Uh, they should be in your library. It's really going to help you tear down some illusions uh, as you begin to study and review these books. But I'm going to dive right on in, uh, giving a book review on this book. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of pages out of the book. And hopefully you're encouraged to go out and buy this book. Oh, it is phenomenal. I don't know why in the world I've never given a review in here. I don't know why. But I'm here today and I'm going to give a review on this book. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay? Uh, let's go on here. Uh, I'm going to start with, with the introduction of the first page. Here, I'm going to read the third paragraph on the first page of the introduction. It says, The early apostolic fathers of Christianity and the church knew of many things that they did not want Christian masses to know about the background, history, content, and people of the Bible. As a result, the very design of Christianity was based upon protecting the Bible from the lay masses. Until the Reformation, therefore, the Bible was secretly guarded and its content was known to only a few in the church because, uh, because of the pre perceived need to protect the Bible from the masses, the earliest design and practice of Christianity was based upon placing a cadre of priests between the Bible and the people. These priests were secretly trained and taught to teach the Bible only in the manner prescribed by the church. Even when the Bible became available to the masses, Christianity still argued that the Bible is so complex that the lay masses would not understand it. So they still needed trained people to interpret the Bible to them. This was again intended to control the interpretation of the Bible based upon the secrets. Er, secrets. Early apostolic, apostolic fathers did not want the masses to know. So they know it's deeper knowledge in there. They know the real meaning of it. But they are determined to give their own biased meaning meaning of the scripture. So that's why it's very important that we research, um, you know, especially my Christian brothers and sisters, that we research the history of this document and see who put it together and what was their motivation for putting it together. Okay? So this is a really, uh, this is a really good book. Um, we'll go on to two. It says, uh, this is still in the introduction, page two. When people in the West read the Bible, they come across stories of the lives of people from different cultures. 
that in itself has fascinating appeal that makes them believe that everything that they are reading is true. When we read the Bible in Africa, we wonder why Europeans have claimed the culture, tradition, religions, and lifestyle in the Bible for Jews, when we still live lives based upon the tradition, religions, and lifestyle in, the, in Africa. For example, Jewish naming ceremonies and rituals have been Igbo naming ceremonies since these people lived in the Middle East and Egypt in ancient times. So he's letting you know, you know, uh, they're writing about it in their biblical scripture, but they still practice these customs over here in Africa. So, I mean, you can, you can clearly see, but because we're not going over to Africa, and, and, and they have told us that their spiritual practice is pagan, it's evil, we don't even know that these uh, these rituals and stuff is in the Bible is a mimic of the, some of the African rituals. They, they still do over there. Okay, and it's because they have told us that it's evil in some type of way. But you see, many of the new age followers are trying to go back um, to those, re, re, you know, to those religions. Okay, okay. So when you see uh, what they call it, they call it neo something, neo spiritual practice or something like that. They're they're labeling it as something else. But they're talking about going back to the more, most ancient spiritual practice, and that's been uh, that's been uh, the neo neo new age. That's going back f farther. They're going back into the ancient practice of indigenous cultures when they're talking about that. Okay, I think like this is five. Mm. With open eyes and countless questions I could not answer in my mind, I began seeing transposed Akan other African tribal names all around me everywhere I looked. I saw I saw them at the end of a movie credits, in books, especially in bibliographies of books. I saw them in names of business and telephone books. I met people that carried transposed African names that did not even know that these names originated from African tribes. When I met real white people with transposed African tribal names, I became more fascinated about that than, a, than, than my discovery of African tribal names of ancient Egyptians. The people I met were real humans, and I, and I wanted to tell a living story before going back to tell the ancient story. I met a man whose name fascinated me more than any other name. His name was Sahim. This is an Akan name meaning warlord. He spells his name just as as we spell his th this word in Akan. But he he is influenced by European phonology. So he pronounces it something like Sahim. Okay, so he's letting you know about the... Uh, the uh the links one well-known document that is always linked to jewish people around the world is the bible not only were the jewish people ancient egyptians but also the documents of the bible were originally compiled edited translated into greek language in ancient egypt when the greeks first translated ancient egyptian history into greek language they transposed akan and other african names of the ancient egyptian into greek language it was therefore prudent for me to assume that in this translation of documents of the Bible into the Greek language, the African tribal names of people of the Bible would also be transposed into various Greek renderings in Greek. Okay. Uh, the discovery of Akan and other African tribal names among modern Jewish people and the discovery of these names, of these names, in the names of the authors of the Old Testament books revealed to me that the Jewish people did not write these documents as they claim. Instead, people from Achan and other African tribes wrote these documents in ancient Egypt as their names on the documents confirm. Also, the history of the Samaria, Samaria and, and 
I also read the history of Sumeria and found out that there were no ancient people called Sumerians. That was a fiction name. A Western historian gave these people unknown ancient, unknown ancient people in 1850. I identified the two African tribes that were the Sumerians from the names and words these people left behind. From all these readings, I was more certain than ever that I would that I have discovered what would have never been known about the Bible before now. So even this Sumerian thing, see, we have to watch out because things are being relabeled to as uh, these new uh, invaders, uh, conquerors come in and they try to, uh, you know, explore things and study things. We have to understand, too, that they relabel things, too. Because he also said, too, Egypt wasn't called Egypt. They didn't really call themselves the Egyptians. They called themselves something else, else uh, from this Achaean tribe. So uh, so you know, we're letting other people come in and name stuff. Uh, they're just like Africa. Africa is really not the name of that continent. You know, there was the person that went in and conquered the con uh, continent. The, the man that went in and conquered the continent named it after himself. So we have to uh, be be aware of, of things as well uh, that things have been uh, relabeled, and it's made it sometimes it makes us makes it difficult for many of us to research uh, the truth. Uh, but this is a very valuable book, a uh, very valuable book. You need to have it in your library if you don't have it. Another reason we need to know of Africans who wrote the Bible is that, again, the foundation of canker of racism and racial prejudice were conceived and developed from the earliest false assumptions, misperceptions, misinterpretations of the Bible. All of these were initiated and directed against black people in justification of slavery, exploitation of their, of their resources in Africa. So let me stop here. Uh, I, I cannot help uh, but to uh, come in here and comment and say, first, there was a war on gender. Okay, all this was possible. All this, this, this stuff was possible uh, because there was a war on gender. Uh, when you see all these religious shifts uh, and where men are placed on top of the, um, of the spiritual hierarchy, uh, that's when patriarchs began to take over because in the ancient uh, times it was it was widely understood in the ancient world that the mother God was a woman Okay, it's, and that's why the, and you see in this uh, When you see this Jesus being born from uh, Mary she is the symbol of symbolism of the, of the the mother God giving first to the first man in his form the first human man okay she is the first, uh, 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 and, and, and we have to understand, too, I hate using that, uh, uh, that term. Uh, I would like to use the term androgynous, uh, but these women, most of the women in, in, in the first um, evolution of humans, most women were androgynous or uh, hermaphrodites, uh, so to speak. Most of them were born with both sex. They were able to uh, produce their own offspring. And there's still genetic mutations of that right now. There are some women, uh, and, and, and sometimes some men, depending on, they have to choose their, their sexuality. Some of them choose later their sexuality. But there's many people, uh, you know, there are some people out there that have the two sexes. They have a penis and they have a vagina. And this is a scientific thing. Okay? So uh, there was a gender shift first. And it's not to later on to this race, this, you know, uh, race thing is put into place. But first, it, the men all agree that women, most of the men, majority of the men, uh, all agree that they need to be on the head and the woman need to be submissive to the man. And you, you, you saw that playing out in some of these ancient movies too, as you see them killing uh, some witches. Uh, as you see them killing some of these sorcerers or, or kidnapping some of these sorcerers, uh, they were they were kidnapping some of these sorcerers and, and taking their power. Uh, many, many of the prophets that you see in 
in the Bible. That's why I said they stole a lot of that. These are prophecies of the Sibyls that later uh, was plagiarized by uh, the Catholic Church. And they used them as, they, uh, as their prophecy. But these are prophecies were originally uh, told to uh, the indigenous ancient culture of our ancestors. So they are prophecies uh, specifically designed uh, to us. You know, they're specifically directed at uh, the indigenous dark culture. And you see, in some of this prophecy is uh, uh, playing out today, it was so accurate, okay? Because these, these uh, prophets saw uh, many, many thousands of years into the future. And they saw the demise of the, uh, the ancient people, of the indigenous culture. They saw the demise of that. And so I thought I should share that with you. Uh... It is time the reality of history is brought out to the history constructed from illusions to be corrected. I do believe if John Locke had known that Africans wrote the Bible, his essay concerning human understanding would have been would not have been so racist and prejudicial against black people. And his essay on reasonableness of Christianity might have read differently. This the, this is the effect of truth on perception. That is why the world should know of, about the Africans who wrote the Bible. So that's, you know, a lot of, of what we need to do, too, we're putting back these illusions because a lot of us are living uh, under these illusions and we're miserable behind it because we really don't know the truth because we're not doing the proper study. So, you know, and this information is not just for indigenous people to help you peel back the illusions, but this is for the entire humanity because we have been miseducated about you know religion and 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 you know especially women we've been really mis miseducated about our history our ancient history and who we are so this is really uh peeling back a lot of the illusion and helping many to awaken to what's really going on around them so this 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 knowledge is for the conscious evolution of all not just a dark skinned people that look like me because a lot of people don't know this information because they're living under the illusion we have to remember some of us are sharing these illusions together and living up under them and they are having that they're, they're having an effect on us we're not happy you know and, and part of the awakening is uh, shedding some of the illusion okay I wanted to read what the author had to say about his Christian experience I thought it was kind of funny uh, you can also tell too he started to have a spiritual awakening after he had uh, he he had became a member of the Christian church. Uh, he started to have a spiritual awakening, and he started remembering some of the things that his grandfather had told him. Uh, and many of us are going through this right now, you know, uh, as we awaken and try to tra uh, begin to transition out of some of these mainstream religions and go back uh, to the knowledge of our ancestors. So let me read this. I attended Presbyterian Missionary School from elementary school through my first college. I liked school. I was good in school. I love my foreign missionary teachers because cause I believe believe then that they had some sort of some sort of I can't even pronounce that word of a Kairi or Europe to help save my people and me from the devil. What hurts me today is the fact that I grew up thinking that they said was the truth and everything they had in Europe was better than what I had in Africa. I grew up thinking that they knew more in Europe than we did in Africa. I did not know that everything they were, were then and whatever they think they are today were all from all my ancient ancestral knowledge in Egypt. My grandfather was worried that I had taken to my foreign teachers so much. When I was about 11 years old, the old man had an unforgettable conversation with me about school and my foreign missionaries and teachers. My grandfather said, Son, I hear you, Albuquerque. is a very far place from here. You, why would you missionary, why would your missionary teachers come all the way from Europe to teach and save us here. <clears throat> I ignorantly, ignorantly 
replied that European missionaries came to us because they had been sent by God to come teach and save us. Which God, which God, and from what have they come come to save us? The old man asked. I heard that these people have not finished teaching and saving their own people in their own homelands. Why would they leave their people and come here to teach and save us? If you had the power to save humans from something, son, would you leave your people here and go to save people in a foreign land, Grandpa asked. So his grandpa is trying to get him to thinking, you know, what is the real motivation of these uh, Christian uh, missionaries? I did not know this conversation was leading to, did not know where this conversation was leading to. And I was not inter interested because I wanted my grandfather to be saved with me. I also thought I knew it all from what my foreign teachers and missionaries had been telling me in school. I concluded in my logic that Grandpa did not know. And he did not understand because he did not get the opportunity to attend a Christian missionary school as I was attending. I was ignorantly proud of that and proud of myself. In anticipation of the situations that may seek to challenge our Christian upbringing, our foreign teachers and missionaries warn us to beware because the devil will want to question our resolve to be Christian. I did not see Grandpa, Grandpa as the devil, but I began to see him differently from, from myself. I began to see him as a pagan, as the pagan my missionary teacher said all Africans were. So they're teaching them that you know what I mean they're going to their land teaching to them to that but we but that doesn't make any sense because if we're pagan you're pagan because you your religion comes from us so you know it comes from indigenous people so if indigenous people are pagan so are you uh one day the old man told me that he was worried about me because I was too gullible I believe that the foreigners t told me rather too easily but i did not know any better then then he gave me his final warning these people are dangerous because they know what they are doing they know what they are talking about is false but they want us to believe it anyway for them to be successful in in what they want to do they need our future they need our sons and daughters and they need our children they need you and others like you because they work on minds. They take away minds. So his grandfather is telling him that. Okay, they're working with illusions. That's what this all about. Your mind is being played with. And so his grandfather knew this. This is the author of the book talking about his conversation with his grandfather. And see, some of our elders be dropping knowledge. Just because they don't be saying nothing, they already peep the game. They just sit back and, and, and you know, watch. But they also know what they'll do if they was to... Uh, dramatically come in and intervene they know they'll be putting themselves and the family in danger by even trying to resist you know some of this ignorance uh, you know by head on confrontation they'll just sit back and hope and, and pray our ancestors pray that we one day wake up and say hey this is all this is a lie uh, the old man was right what okay Son, I want you to go to school, but never give them your mind because a human body is like a snake's body. When one cuts off the snake's head, the rest is nothing but a rope. If you give the missionaries your head, you will never be, be, be like them. And the saddest part is you will never be yourself. You will never even know who you are. The old man was right. So he led her to find out that his, his grandfather was right. What hurts me now is that I thought my grandpa did not know what he was talking about. Then so, then, so I believe my foreign teachers and missionaries instead. Now I know that grandpa was right. He knew something I did not know. But I was too young to, to be told my people's traditional secrets. And he was not ready to tell me yet. European missionaries came to Africa to find vanguard for the legendary lies they were carrying. So that they could lead my people quietly into submission. And we submitted to them. 
Those of us who had been to school defended European and Christian lives before our own people, and we were more credi credible than the Europeans. Later, I found out that was exactly what European savers and teachers wanted us to do. They wanted those of us they had school to defend their lives for that they gave us cert certificates, diplomas, degrees. We were, walk we were walking around proud that we were the new generation African Europeans. It's a lot of them out there. I had some African to argue me down that... Uh, you know, with this kid, with his Christianity, and he was from he was from Africa. He was from Ghana or somewhere, and he was you know he was upset with me because I wasn't Christian. And I was African American, so you know it's it's a lot of them out there. All of these could happen because of the introduction of African theosophical ideas to Europeans through the Bible. It is also one of the reasons the world should now know about the Africans who wrote the Bible. One day, the old man asked me a question in frustration. Where were these people when our ancestors were creating wisdom? I had never heard that, heard that my ancestors ever created wisdom. The old people never told us in our rites of passage, of passage initiation. We have stories about Anasse, the spider, and wisdom, but I did not think it would refer to my ancestors. We have stories. We have stories of this in Sene's, the spider collecting, trying to hide all wisdom in the world somewhere. But I did not know the Europeans were going behind digging my digging my ancestors' past in search of this wisdom. My missionaries, teachers were taking credit for the knowledge of my ancestors created. And I was also giving them the credit that was due me and mine. Instead of finding out when and where my ancestors created wisdom, I thought then that if wisdom were ever created, the ancestors of my missionary teachers must have created it because they were so wise in the things that they were teaching us. What hurts me now is the fact that my grandpa did not live long enough to for me to go back home to tell him that I have that I have been that I have been to the home of my missionary teachers and found out the truth. My ancient Egyptian ancestors created all the wisdom the missionary teachers came to teach me in Africa. So, you know, he begins to wake up. And uh, I, thought that, I thought that was an interesting story. I had to share that with you because many of us uh, can resonate with some of that story. I know I certainly can. Um, but I didn't have nobody. I don't think any of my parents or, or you know, body woke me up. I think once I started researching for myself, and, and, and reading books, I really began to awaken and say, hey, uh, my ancestors created all of this. Let me back up off this and learn some more about my ancestors. So, uh, you know, I think that's, I, that, that is the route I took. Uh, Okay. The Achaean people were the designers and developers of the ancient Egyptian civilization. And this is confirmed by the fact that the names of the earliest kings from the earliest dynasty of ancient Egypt are transposed Achaean names. They are the Achaean people that have held and kept the secret of the ethnic origin of the Jewish people for over 300 years, over 3,000 years. And these people are ready to tell their story. The common revelation of the African language the Jewish people spoke from which they derived their ancient identity also reveals the original African tribal and ethnic origin of the Jewish people. Uh, I thought this was interesting because uh, he mentions Arkansas in here. This author mentions Arkansas. This book was written in a far away in, in far away America where I had a very, very few Achaean people to use as sounding boards. I would therefore like to thank my nephew Quasi Abogai, I can't pronounce that word, and his wife Gloria Obagai, who were the only sounding boards when I wanted to clarify some aspects of Achaean names, cultures, and traditions. 
the Sankofa Study Group of Association for the Study of Classical African Civilization and the People of the Emani Temple in Little Rock, Arkansas, were the first people to whom I revealed these ideas. I thank them fervently for their reception and encouragement. They made me feel that this information is something millions of people would want to know, so I kept chipping at it. And that's here in, in Little Rock, Arkansas, where I'm located. Uh, African, Africa's ancient history is woven through her religion, and her religion is closely knit around her ancestors. The very foundation of her being. This is the foundation of foundation every African takes seriously and no one easily forgets. So your ancestors are very important. So you hear this author uh, you hear that author uh, mentions that. I don't know why this person keeps following me. As a result of ancestral work like this would not be complete without dedicating it to the glorious life of our ancestors and the divine elements that gives us life. This is the earth this is to the earth, and this is to the sky, and everything in between. This is to the wind, fire, and water, and the sustenance they give us. This is to life, and it is to, it, it is to health. This is to our ancient ancestors, from whom we derive our greatness. This work is so, is so, this work is to these ancestors upon whom we rely to be granted all we need in this passage. This is to the recently departed who are on their way to join the great ones as our ancestors. I thought there was, uh, I, I could not, uh, you know, that was really, really, really uh, good. Really good, really good, really good reading. Okay, I'm going to go on to page 13. I got a couple of, how many more pages? One, two, three, four, five. I got about five or six more pages like i said this is a very juicy book i don't know how come i've never did a review on it i just i i, I was slipping on that one. i got caught slipping on that one but i'm going to read page 13 in this book and this is in chapter one the book has seven chapters uh over 300 pages in it uh it's very juicy throughout you're not going to be disappointed when you get this book this is a must have book okay uh, the Europeans knew that Jesus, his mother, and the people of the Bible were all black. However, they simply refused to accept it because it did not fit into the Euro Europe's comparative anthropological, anthropological perception of itself and the black people who were now, now the Africans. The people of the Bible derived their black racial ethnic heritage from the black people that were the ancient Egyptians. These were the people, some some of who broke away from the ancient Egypt, went to live in Canaan, and later went to Europe to become Jews and Hebrews. Okay? Uh, the Sybil talks about that too, because she talks about these Levites priests being present in Egypt when the mother goddess was ahead of Egypt. And then there was, there was some patriarchs that started grouping together to overthrow uh, the matriarch culture that was present in Egypt. Uh, I think... Um, that that uh that lower Egypt and upper Egypt, I think that had a lot to do with that. Uh, you know, their disputes that they had. I think it had a lot to do with this gender uh, shift as well. Okay, these he these Jews and Hebrews of Canaan later went to Europe to become Jews and Hebrews. The Hebrews and Jews of Canaan later, uh, Europe therefore derived their black racial ethnic heritage from the black tribes, from who. They originated in ancient Egypt before they broke away into the biblical exodus. Okay? The racial and ethnic identity of Jesus, his mother, the people of the Bible, are about the true racial and ethnic heritage of the Jewish people and the people from whom they originated before they became the Jews and Hebrews in Europe. Sir Godfrey Higgins, I think he was a scholar, if I'm not mistaken. Sir Godfrey Higgins went on to point out that with the growth and development of European racism, many of European churches embarked upon concealing the truth 
of the blackness of the people of the Bible from the Christian masses and European public. As a result, some some of these churches designed the propaganda to either explain why the earliest Christian images of Jesus and his mothers were black, or deny entirely that these people were originally black. To make such denial and propaganda easy and plausible, most of the churches removed the black figurines of Jesus and his mother from the churches and European public view and replaced them with white images. The church had worshipped the black images of Jesus and his mother in all Catholic churches in Europe for over a thousand years. Therefore, it could not, it could not question these revelations. Moreover, it was not the place of the church to question the racial ethnic background of people of the Bible. As a result, the church action of quietly removing the black images of Jesus and his mother, replacing them with white images, confirmed that these revelations were true and impeachable. Sir Higgins also pointed out that black figurines of Christ and his mother were not thrown away or destroyed. They they were kept secret in secret base, basement and repositories where they still held sacred held sacred by the few who who know and believe in the religious purity and originality true spirit of Christianity so uh, ma many of them uh, they still uh, venerate the black mother God okay they, they still venerate they still getting down with Isis and all set that's what that is all about this is not about Mary, you know, again, this is about, there is a symbolism of the first mother giving birth to the first human, okay? That is, that, that is what that Jesus, you know, that virgin birth is all about because she was androgynous. She was a, a so-called, I hate the word, her Murphodite. She was able to give a birth to her, uh, her first offspring, Okay, her first mate, her mate. Uh, let me go on to page 20. Uh, again, this is in chapter 1. I thought this was interesting to note. Uh, I love the work that this author does. This uh, author has did some phenomenal work uh, in researching this book. Uh, you know, I'm going to read this. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to make this as short as possible, that, you know, but I went on 40 minutes just reading uh, this book because it's such a juicy book. Uh, you have to get this book. It's such a good book. The Essenes are were a religious and political group of Jewish people, but these people derive the name of this group from the African tribal identity. Specifically, they derive this name from the name of the Akan tribe. The Akan tribe from which the Jewish Essenes derived the name of their religious political group was Essen. The Asin tribe is a tribe of black people. And the Akan and the Akan of black people and the Akan tribal group of which the Asin people are members are also black, thus confirming the black racial ethnic heritage of the ancient Jewish people before they went went to become Jews and Hebrews in Europe. The Asin people can now be located in sub South Central Ghana in West Africa. The conclusion is if one of the lost tribes of Jewish people is black, then it follows that the rest would also be black. And that should further confirm the African ethnic heritage of the Jewish people who claim to have originated from these lost tribes. Okay. Okay, let me go on. That was page 20. I'm going to go on to page 26. I'm trying not to keep you here long, but like I said, I, I, you know, I want to give a good review of this book because this is a really good book, guys. It's so juicy. Yeah, I love juicy stuff. I just love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, uh, let's see, 26. Uh, what were we talking? Ancient African tribal name of the Jewish people. I thought this, I think, uh. I don't know if this is where he breaks down to the Afrim. When he breaks down because before the Jews were uh, Jews, they were Afrim. That's their real ancient name is Afrim. I don't know how they get from Jews to Hebrews. Again, uh, they tried to make uh, this sound English. 
by you know by trying to hide the fact that that you know these Jews these you know these Jews uh, have African origin. But let me go on. To be able to confirm all this, we must go back to the ancient times in the formative years of the people that left ancient Egypt into the so-called Exodus. Latter went to Europe to become the Jews and Hebrews. We must go back to the times when these people had a name and an identity, but they were not known as Jewish people. We must go back to the times when the people that left ancient Egypt had a collective African tribal name reflecting their African racial ethnic linguistic identity. The Jewish people must have long forgotten this name, and I do not think many modern Jewish people know this ancient African name that carried the racial and ethnic identity before they went to become the Jews and Hebrews in Europe. So he's saying that, hey, not even the Jews don't even know their ancient history. You know, either they, they know it and they ignore it, you know what I'm saying, uh, but, you know, I find that many of us don't know many things about ourselves until we start doing the historical research on ourselves. So they, many of them probably don't, probably don't know. From the Aiken and African tribal names of modern Jewish people, I knew immediately that they were related to Aiken and other African tribes. From the Aiken name of their nation and the Aiken names of their God, I knew that, that the people that left the ancient Egypt in biblical exodus originally spoke Achan language. From the troll transposed Achan other African tribal names of these people whose names are in the Bible as authors of books in the Bible. I was more than certain that the people that left the ancient Egypt in biblical exodus were mostly Achan. The question that was left for me to answer was, who were these people before they went to Europe? To become Jews and Hebrews? How did they identify themselves before they became Jews or Hebrews? How did they come by the Achan and other African tribal names they have carried to Europe after thousands of years? Were they African tribes before they were Jews and Hebrews? And what African tribes were they? The people that left ancient Egypt in biblical ex exodus were black, black people that had an African name or identity. The ancient racial, ethnic, and collective African name and identity by which people that left ancient Egypt and biblical exodus identified themselves before they went, be, went on to become Jews, Hebrews, in Europe was the name Afrin. Okay? The Achan people that these people left behind in ancient Egypt called these people of exodus Afrin people. And the people of Exodus also called themselves Afrin people. So he's letting you know he's double confirmed, confirmed, confirmed. Uh, these people are calling themselves Afrin people. Okay? Beyond all evidence presented discussion so far, the linguistic evidence uh, of how the people left ancient Egypt is biblical Exodus identified themselves before they went, to be, went on to become Jews and Hebrews in Europe in the most powerful e is the most powerful evidence. This is the most conclusive evidence of African origin and heritage of Jesus and his mother and, and the all of the so-called people of the Bible. It is the most conclusive evidence supporting Catholic Church's earliest portrayal of, the Je of Jesus, his mother, as black, as black people. And it is also most conclusive evidence that would reveal African tribes from which the Jewish people originated. Okay, so he, he lets you know who these Afrin people are. Uh, that was page 26. I'm going to page 85. I'm almost done here. I'm going to wrap it up here in a minute. I got 85 and 88, and then I'll let you go. But I hope you really enjoyed this book review. You can come back and watch it. Uh, and, and, and hopefully uh, this book review is encouraging you to uh purchase the book you know have this in your library so you can pass this down to your children so they'll know the truth uh i'm certainly keeping it in my library so uh my children will know the truth and you know these libraries are, are you know that's sacred to me having this knowledge is sacred to me okay uh this is the western perception uh of documents of the bible uh, and this is, uh, I want to say this is chapter three. This is chapter three, uh, page 88. It says, in Christianity, myth and legend have acquired immense historical values because 
They have been told often for too long they have been given a glowing badge of truth and credibility. For 2,000 years, the Bible has been the source of book, the sort the source book of inspiration, faith, hope, and spirituality. For millions around the world, the Bible has taught us about life, death, and eternal life, but not many of us know about the Bible itself. One of the most important ideas Christian Europe and, and Christians around the world have least known about is the story behind the creation of the Bible. From the discussion in the last two chapters, it is evident that they were the Africans that created the foundations of religions and knowledge upon which our world lives today. What happened what happened after this after this was that in the past five hundred years, European politicians, scholars and religious leaders have used the knowledge and religion religion these Africans created to shape human knowledge, perception and view view of the world. In this endeavor the Europeans have forgotten Convenient, conveniently overlooked is that it was the Bible that the African wrote that laid the foundation, direction, justification for the courage that Europeans needed to do all the positive, negative things they have done to human history. They have done in human history. While not distracting from European achievement, achievements in this regard, few Europeans have had the courage to acknowledge that the Bible was the source book that opened the minds and imagination of early modern Europeans and therefore Africans must be credited for this ancient creation. Even fewer Europeans will admit today that it was the philosophical doctrines of Bible and religion that drifted Europeans towards what they now call civilization, just as religion and these same ideas did for the Africans in ancient Egypt over 5,000 years ago. Okay, these scholars have found out that the people, the history, the documents of the Bible are not sacred as a conspiracy of priesthood have made them to be over the past 2,000 years. What is said about the fi findings is that they are not exposed to the public as mainstream knowledge about the Bible. Such perceptions of the Bible of most Western scholars is represented by what Will Durant wrote. So he talks about this guy, Will Durant. The writers of the documents of the Old Testament, sorry, Testament left their indigenous Achan and other African tribal names on these documents. Unfortunately, Christian Europe without the historical linguistic culture terror African, not only do we know that these biblical names are African, but we even know the specific African tribes to which these names and the names of the modern Jew, Jewish people belong. He talks about that in his last chapter, his book. He really bra breaks down the books in the Bible and show you uh, the African origin of them. So, uh, like I said, that's, it's a very good book. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's it. Uh, and I'm not going to keep you any more, any longer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this book review. And I hope you uh, think about getting uh, getting this book and add it into your library. Because uh, it's priceless to have. Uh, this guy's really did a lot of footwork and, and, and connecting everything together. So, And I thank you so much for being here. And welcome new subscriber. Like and share our videos. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.